right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Wednesday afternoon, a special edition of Knicks Fan TV, man. I, I give a lot of uh, the credit uh, on the rise of this platform to this man right here. He is a marketing extraordinaire, social media maven, the chairman of Vayner X, the CEO of Vayner Media, and a diehard Knicks fan. Gary V is on a platform. Gary, welcome to Knicks Fan TV, man. Happy to have you on. Humbled to be on, my friend. Congrats on everything. Thank you very much. And and Gary, also, his new book, Day Trading Attention, is out now. So we're going to talk Knicks, and we're going to talk about his book as well. And so, Gary, uh, on these Knicks, man, what, what was your takeaways from this season? A, a tremendous run here. What would you think, man? Man, especially watching this Boston Pacers series, like, I think we all feel the same way, which is like, it could have been, man, you know, just, I can't even imagine the team that blew, I was at the Heat game when they blew him out of the building and then Randall goes down and, you know, from there, it just, it's really, really too bad because it's not so easy to win a championship. I don't have to explain that to anyone who's watching. And again, over the last 25 years, you think about the Spurs dynasty, you think about the Lakers, you think about obviously LeBron's run, you know, and the obviously Golden State. There just aren't that many years. When I look over at what's going on with Minnesota and Dallas, are you telling me if every if Bogey, if if you know OG, if Randall, you know, you know, are you telling me that if we weren't healthy that we couldn't compete? I mean, with Mitch, like I just, I feel like if we were healthy, we could have won a championship. That's insane to say for all of us Nick fans, but so there's a lot of what ifs, but injuries are part of sports. You know, Porzingis isn't playing up in Boston right now. Like, you know, everyone gets dinged up. It is what it is. You don't make the excuses, but for us fans who've been so hungry for so long, it was so enjoyable. It's also like, you know, if this, like, for example, that Pistons team that wanted, you know, yeah, those, 04. Yep. Like, yep. Like that's a team that like New York could have been bra- right. We're not a, this is not a finesse team, right? Like I love, who doesn't love Steph and Clay and obviously Draymond's got, you know, juice, but like this team is especially very New Yorked out. Yeah. Right. And so like on top of them playing well, obviously the 15 team, you know, we love all those guys and Melo is as good as it gets. And like, but the reality is there's no confusion for anyone here. This is as New York of a New York team as those mid nineties teams, as those early seventies teams, Dave the Butcher and Phil Jackson scrapping, like they're just a the scrappiness of this team. Even our superstar and Brunson is just like, you know, yeah. lunch pail and like no more, like the whole thing is just perfect. Yeah. And so look, now we're into a different version of an off season that we're not accustomed to. It's not praying for a ping pong ball. It's, you know, it's not, praying for Kevin Durant. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we all know this is one of the most important off seasons in the franchise history. It can go in a lot of different ways, but like I will forever. And I got very fortunate. My son went on the journey with me Yeah, and he's of that age. And so this will be something I'll remember to the day I die. And so I'm grateful for the team and the run. It stings. Cause you're like, man, as tough as Luca and Kyrie are, and mm -hmm. you know, obviously Minnesota has got a long way to go. I just feel like we could have competed with this Boston team if healthy and obviously recognizing that they're missing Porzingis and yeah. so exciting, but feels like what if, you know, I said that going into the playoffs with the, on the heels of the Randall injury. I said, this is going to go down. They're going to have a good run, but this is going to go down as a big, what if postseason, And we're seeing it now, especially like and, you said, and, when you look at and Boston, you're right about like, that. And I thought the same way, but the way it played out that I don't think you and I could have saw was if OG and Bogey and Mitch stayed healthy, even yeah. without Randall, and I'm aware of how feel fans think about it, but like, yeah. like Randall, like I just feel like they were showing you that they were going to figure it out. And I feel yeah. like Randall has done nothing in his career that makes me think that he couldn't have figured out how to play with OG and Brunson and all this. And I understand how the ball goes through there, and we we talk like, and it stays there, but it stays there out of necessity. Yeah. And as this team was with OG being added, you could see already in the limited time we got to see them all together, it was already a slightly different version. They were just starting to figure it out. 
just starting to figure it out, man. 14 in two in, in January. And so the Randall injury was untimely. And then OG going down. That was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back in that Pacers series. Hardenstein with an offensive rebound. Another chance here. DiVincenzo. He's got it. The Knicks have the lead again. Series. Take me back to game two. Knicks versus Sixers at the Garden. DiVincenzo lights up MSG with the with the last second three-pointer. There's an iconic shot of you, Ben Stiller, Chris Rock, Spike Lee. Take me through what that moment felt like. You're on the garden floor. You had to feel the, 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 the energy on your back, man. What, what did that feel like, man? You know, when you go, obviously the photo is forever. And yeah. like any Nick fan listening, and like if anybody knows my story, like, you know, when I start liking the Knicks the season before Ewing, you know, I'm in the mindset of like, will I ever go to a game, let alone be in a place where I could be in a picture like that. So it's humbling and like a forever thing for me. But let's go into the moment. The moment was when you go in a five minute, seven minute real life span, because obviously the clock stops, where you're going from, oh crap, we're going to lose game two. Man, I knew it. This was a tough draw. We should have this sucks, like Philadelphia's not a real seven. Like you're going through the, like, you know, when you're a diehard, when you're a big fan, you're hedging your feelings. So I'm in already like, we're gonna lose, like I'm trying to sell myself, get prepared for the devastation of, you know, and game one was no easy game. And like, yeah. you're just kind of like, oh man, we're gonna lose this series. <laughs> Cause mm -hmm. that's how I get, I'm not, I'm optimistic in every part of my life. Everything you see for me is real, except in sports, cause <laughs> I'm not in control and I'm trying to hedge my feelings. Yeah. It's, it's the Jets fan in you, you it's used Jets, to it. And Knicks, I yeah, mean Jets yeah, and Knicks. Yeah, and Knicks, yeah, yeah. It's, there, it's in me and, and by the way, pre-1994 Rangers. I mean, the true, 92 true, Rangers true. was the best Rangers team I ever had. And Lemieux and all, you know, Yager, those guys killed me, but, Man, I was literally, in seven minutes, me, my brother, my son were like, we're dead, we're dead. And and I'm already in my head of like, man, I don't know, like this, we're not gonna win this series. And not because I didn't believe that we would, it was more just starting already the process to hedge my feelings. And then for that, and by the way, mm -hmm. where I was sitting, you know, that, that Brunson three looked way short. Mm. And obviously it hits the rim, it goes in. I mean, the devastation with DiVincenzo, like, you know, that roller coaster, like when he missed the first one, I was dead. And then, you know, one thing I'll never forget, and it'll be very subtle in 30 years, the amount of big rebounds Isaiah had in this oh, playoff. Like, major, man, major. Me, I mean, he gets that board amongst three dudes, kicks it back out, the place goes insane. Yeah, man, it's just like, I'm just so grateful. There's nothing like these memories. I, I was at, you know, I was at the Starks dunk game. Mm. Uh, Sam Cassell's three, to this day, I can't get out of my stomach. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, it's a long time ago, so I know some of the kids probably know about it if they're listening to this show because they're diehards, but that Sam Cassell three was devastating. Yeah. And so you think about those moments, right? And and um, uh, by the way, What's his name's three in the Pacers series? We could have been up three up. That part, game three. Yeah, man, that yeah, that three yeah. is that one really felt like there was no reason for that to go in. So you think about these moments forever. I mean, I think about Xavier McDaniel. I mean, I think about Ewing's corner shot. What about his corner three against Boston or you game one when we stole against the Bulls in ninety one or ninety two? Mm -hmm was such a stunner because you thought you were getting swept because yeah. Jordan was on his game already. Yeah. We went into Boston hitting game one, Ewing from the corner over Cartwright. You can like, I can say this 30 year, you know, five years. It's crazy. These memories that DiVincenzo three will be forever etched in my life. It was an insane moment, man, and, and a great run. Uh, are you team run it back or we need to make a major move in this off season? Big off season coming up for the Knicks. You know, man, it's crazy. Like, listen, there's no reason not to make your team better. And all our, all of us know, as fans, there's, there's as delusional as we all are. There's the logical part that we all know. We don't know what we don't know. Meaning, you can run it back. Look, look. We, I mean, after what you see this year, you're like, why not run it back? Mm -hmm. But we have so much ammo, and what we all know is, Paul George, this and, and. Mikhail Bridges that, and like, 
you know, obviously, and look, we're all seduced by the Villanova thing. Like, mm-hmm. what Nick fan says no to Mikel Bridges? Yeah. yeah. None. Because it'll be just too fun, right? Like, it's like, yeah. let's get Jay Wright, like, you know, like, to hang around, like, be the 16th man. Like, like mm-hmm. but what I'm curious about is who's going to become available that even the most educated, like yourself, that follow the league day in and day out, who's that one guy? You know, a stretch five on this team could be crazy. Yeah. You know, so I don't know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, there's gonna be somebody that, and we have so much ammo, Um, but look, Isaiah, like that re-signing is gonna be like some work. You know, I think we all are very foregone conclusion on OG, but like, let's make sure that happens. So look, I think, I, I think you'd like to think that there's a move to be made, but man, this team, you're telling me this team healthy couldn't win the title this year? They could have. Yeah, now, yeah. next year, people reload up. You saw what Boston did in one offseason. They got really strong. Mm-hmm. Those, you know, that they loaded up. Is- and so, yeah, I think, I don't think any fan, remember, short for fanatic, is going to not say, let's make a move because you start dreaming of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm a little, I don't want a splashy move. Look, Devin Booker, because Phoenix is a mess. It's hard to not get excited about that. But when you're going to make a monster move, it changes so many chemistry things. And I don't think a single Nick fan doesn't want Jalen to be an alpha. Yeah. So those are the things I'm worried about. Like it, it look, it's a look, this whole fan base could be super weird by Thanksgiving. Cause if we're like one game under 500, but we look better on paper, we're all going to be like, we fucked it up. Yeah, we yeah. shouldn't have done it. What's you know what I mean? On? Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. And yeah, you know, we'll wait and see if there's a big name to be had, but you never know. I mean, the the way that OG Ananobi, that trade really transformed this team. I look at the way Derek White kind of transformed the Celtics when they got him last year. It could be another move like that where you take the bogey contract, you take a couple picks, and you get another guy who fits into the culture, fits with this team chemistry, and takes them up a notch. So going to be interesting to see what what Leon Rose and those guys do. It feels like... Like, I think everyone who's unemotional, who's trying to be strategic, it feels, to your point, like a, let me use grades, a C plus B minus splash move up front with still unlimited ammo to do something before the trade deadline to do an A plus move right. feels like logical. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, true indeed. True indeed, man. Once again, we're talking to Gary V. Salute to Next Nation. Let's talk about day trading attention. The new book, which came out on May 21st, you had jab, 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 right hook. You had crush it. What do you want the 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 reader, the the listener, the watcher of, of this show to take away from day trading attention? Just like yourself and like hundreds of thousands of other people that reached out to me in the last 20 years, I'm out here trying to put out all my best secrets because I'm not trying to go to the grave with it. I'm going to get mine regardless. So I'm trying to leave real tactical positive deposits. To, you, you know this. I put out this 84-page deck years ago, and you and many others used it. It was fucking free. Mm-hmm. This is 24 bucks or whatever it is on Amazon, and I'm putting down on wax the best advice tactically on how anybody who's listening right now, whether it's about the Knicks or whether it's about basketball or it's about wine or pizza or travel or fast cars or video games, like people can build their future using social media. It is free. But the reason it is incredible is even though it's free, everyone's competing for that attention. And so you gotta be better. And so I put out the blueprint, the modern blueprint of how to win on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube to the best of my ability. And I'm, look, I'm comfortable saying I'm good at it and I run the biggest agency in the world that's good at it in social media, creative and strategy and media. And mm-hmm. I think um, I've been blown away by the first week of response. I got somebody this morning who's like a chiropractor who's like, I was getting 30 <laughs> views a video and now I'm getting 800 and I got a lead from it today, thank you. And I'm like, that's it. That's the high that I'm trying to get. In the same way our Knicks are trying to hit a three and get a timeout called and all of us get on our feet and go crazy. I'm I'm trying to put out books where somebody listening right now is a big Nick fan who's in a job that they're just okay with. They don't love it, but they know more about Call of Duty than anybody on earth because they play it all night or about whiskey or about cornhole or about 
WWF or about MMA and they don't realize they could be making 150K a year talking about that stuff versus making 90K a year with a job they hate and I want to get them on that journey. And so I put out the manual. Well, one thing I felt like I went through it front and back, like an audio book, and kind of like I, I consume most of the podcast and the YouTube content. And I felt like for me, it was kind of an evolution from the content framework PDF, where I'm more cognizant now of the content because more relevance is more reach, right? That that was one of the key things. So yes, I want to add that value, but also be thinking in terms of relevance, thinking in terms of the context understanding the nuances of each individual platform, not just repurposing for the sake of repurposing. And so those, those and, are some of the and key strategy, ones. right? Like in the book, I go hard, let's talk about your world. You making a video that starts with why every Nets fan wants Bridges to be traded to the Knicks. Think about what that is for you. That's you reaching a new audience because that's primary net fan. But think, yeah. you know this, there's a lot of people that are funny, like diehards on both sides are like, you have to hate the, I hate the Nets. But you, you know this, we got hundreds of thousands of people in the tri-state area who are funny, who are like, I like both the Nets and Knicks because mm -hmm. they're casual. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I want them to listen to your show. And if they're 65% Nets, 35% Knicks because they're a casual, well, that video on TikTok or YouTube Shorts or Instagram is a piece of content that's going to get you into more awareness and growth. And if you didn't read the book and know about cohorts, mm -hmm. you probably don't wake up in the morning thinking about making content for net fans that might watch your show. But with this Bridges rumor in the air, that gives you logic for it. And then if you start with like, why every Nets fan should want Bridges to go to the Knicks in that one, two seconds that we have in the stream, that's how I tried to break down the book to go that nerdy. For yeah. someone like you that knows stuff, that it was valuable to you, but then also for someone who's like just listening and got inspired of like, yeah, I want to do something around coffee, you know, even though I'm a paralegal, mm. I'm going to start making that content. Gary's right. I wanted it to land for them. And I, I think I caught it. You know, sometimes you, you know, when you, <laughs> let's use basketball. I definitely know when the ball comes out of my hand, if it's got a shot or it's got no shot. Yeah. <laughs> and the same with books. Like, like, free throws. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just know that I hit one. I've had a lot of success. Um, and all of them being good, but some are just, you know, back to Brunson's corner three, mm -hmm. that bounced off, janked in, and then there's just, some of them are just super wet, yeah. all net, right? I think I've I've made a lot of shots in my books, but this one is straight, straight net, mm -hmm. and, and I'm excited about people reading it. Nick's Nation, we're going to take a quick pause in the action to salute our sponsor of the day, and that is Manscaped. Fellas, Father's Day is coming up, and our friends at Manscaped has the total package for Dad's Big Day. Whether it's the boys downstairs, the beard, or just some nice underwear out there, Manscaped has got you guys covered, man. Go over to manscaped.com, use our code KFTV, as usual, for 20% off plus free shipping. You can go from the Lawnmower 5.0, my favorite, the Beard Hedger kit the handyman the close-knit shaver how about some body wash shampoo conditioner ball deodorant ball toner foot deodorant whatever you need dad has it there at manscape.com also for you dads out there suggest that to your significant other tell the wife tell the girlfriend tell the significant other to get you some products from manscape so that you can be looking your best man these are our guys and once again go to kf go to manscape.com use our code kftv for 20 percent off plus free shipping in terms of when i look at especially my feelings in, in the sports media world you know, everybody's coming out with the podcast everybody has a take and so i'm not just concerned with with the attention but also the retention and for me it, it's made me go back to some of your original thoughts and in getting into the comments listening more digging into the analytics but also we do a lot of meetups here at Knicks Fan TV. We've done meetups in LA and Philly and Miami and really just getting out, dapping people up, getting their story of how they became, you know, fans of our platform and what we did for them. I felt like, you know, really getting hand to hand with those people, getting back Thank to the that's, DMs. That's, that's my second book ever. Thank you, Economy. In the trenches. You got to love them. You got to love them. Like, I, I don't want know why people take listeners or viewers for granted. It makes no sense. You got to be grateful and humble and like, I just, I don't know why people big time the people that made them. 
What do you think about the way that the content is kind of segmented now? You have different players in the game. I look at the McAfee model as a kind of a hybrid, right? He, he's taking his platform, he goes to an established um, entity in an ESPN, and they're kind of, one hand is kind of helping the other there. There Now you have the individual athletes jumping in, the athlete-based podcast, shooting up to, to the top of every charts, independents like myself, established entities. What do you think about the state of the game and, and, and where it's going from a sports media standpoint? Day trading attention. It's all free to everybody. And so you can be Jay Hart and Brunson. You could be you. And then when you uh, someone like you builds up enough momentum, I mean, I'm on Pat McAfee's podcast early on when they were just getting a little something going. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is going to be a big show one day. It's how I feel about you. It's why I said yes to this. Appreciate like, that. What do I think? I think it's competition. I love competition. Like, I love when people mm-hmm. cover competition and then cry about competition. You know, like yeah. you're asking it proper, but I have some people come up and be like, Gary, this sucks. Like, I can't break mm-hmm. through because this guy's doing this and this one got money and this mm-hmm. one got this. I'm like, and? That's like somebody who's five seven saying like they can't be in the NBA because some everyone's too big. Like, yeah, that's that's the game. What do I think about the State of the Union? I think it's more competitive than ever because there's no cost of entry to be in the game. It's low. It's none. And that's why I'm trying to put out a book like this trying to give my community a leg up period like what do I, I think it's great i love competition simple as that uh just a couple more for you once again we're, we're, we're talking to a uh, gary v salute to next nation cp the franchise here uh one another kit takeaway i took for from the uh from the book was the linkedin strategy because for me that that's a blind spot in an area that i want to develop a, a bit more uh, but from your your point there, when you were saying, you know, a lot of people are kind of fearful or hesitant to put their stories out there on LinkedIn for fear of ego or fear of bragging. So how do you turn for someone like me who's in the sports media game? How do you turn that into a media play on LinkedIn where it's not just, you know, I'm showing my numbers, I'm showing my analytics, but actually bringing value to the platform for overall networking and, and brand building? Well, I think LinkedIn's interesting just because like, just cause you're on LinkedIn and you're, you know, a big executive at like Amazon, but if you're a Knicks fan, you're a Knicks fan. I think people overthink about it. Like, like there's two ways to think about LinkedIn. One contextual to LinkedIn and it's business culture. And you could make content about how I built my platform and people might find that interesting and get to know you. But you can literally post something about why you think Alec Burks does this on defense or not does that on defense um, <laughs> uh, uh, and post on LinkedIn and like Gary, I'll speak for myself. If I'm on LinkedIn working and I see something titled of like Deuce McBride's secret to, you know, closing out on threes, I'm just going to watch it. Cause I'm a human being. I just happen to be on LinkedIn. Mm. Or if I see, how I built this Nick's podcast, six steps that will get you growth on podcasts. Obviously if I'm on, like, again, there's different ways to think about it, but LinkedIn's just a platform to distribute that if you make content that people wanna watch, it will get more reach. And I don't understand why modern Mm -hmm. content makers don't post on LinkedIn or Facebook or Snapchat Spotlight because you're just missing opportunity. It's as simple Mm -hmm. as that. Like, why are you judging where you might pop off on? True. And oh, by the way, TikTok and Instagram and Twitter, they're more competitive. Yeah. Yeah. A- absolutely. Where, where 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 are you on Snap Spotlight? Nowhere. I have exactly. no presence on Snap. And when I tell you, it's fertile for you. Mm. Fertile. I got to check it. And, TikTok and oh, by Live. the way, there's not 80,000 people making Nick's content on there like they are on Twitter. Snapchat Spotlight. There you go. Definitely appreciate that. Uh, last one for you here. The the rumored NBA uh, live rights deal it says that NBA and NBC could be coming back. You have other players. Amazon trying to jump into the fray. TNT may be out, maybe in. It's not clear yet. What are you thinking about in terms of the new rights deal? And, and uh, where do you see you know, VaynerMedia, VaynerX making a play there? You know, our play is running ads. So we're going to pay attention where it goes. And in general, ads during breaks of television or bad ads. So it's not a major thing for us from an agency standpoint, though we're always paying attention. Mm -hmm. 
honestly, real talk, as a fan, I'm agnostic other than, and this is obviously very emotional with TNT, in the history of sports rights, the things that always fucked me up were your favorite pre-game, post-game, mid-game commentators, if they if they lost the rights and you're like, damn, I lost what's his name or her? Like, you know, so I think like, you know, when ESPN lost Sunday Night Football and I lost Chris Berman, yeah. that killed me. And then you got used to Football Night in America, right? Yeah. I mean, look, people are gonna be very emotional about losing that TNT show. Yeah, yeah. The question is, will the new players be able to, I don't know the contracts of all those guys right. and what, the, but like, but then, you know, new people pop up and people's contracts are up. Like I pay attention, like Stephen A is going to be coming up yeah. soon. Yeah. Colin Cower. I don't know what left goes deal is like, yeah. it's a reset. You know, what do I think? I think it seems, and I don't have any inside information. It seems like TNT is going to lose it. And then you get yeah. excited about what team NBC is going to put on. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting, man. Going to be tough to lose uh, the the inside, the NBA guys and TNT, Love Ernie, and uh, Charles Barkley has been very vocal and, and uh, you know, coming after Yeah, what has Chuck been saying? Basically, he's saying that TNT dropped the ball and that he could potentially look to roll that show into his independent media company and see his, if production, maybe company, he, right? his production company and maybe he can license it from, from there. Yeah, didn't he say he saw someone on Twitter told him to do it? <laughs> I did see that clip. That was that made me laugh. Yeah, man, listen. Like, this is the history of sports distribution. CBS, like, when CBS lost the AFC, like, man, that was crazy to me when NB, like, like CBS lost the NFC to Fox. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, it is, like, this is the history as old as time. Yeah. Distribution changes. They put in new teams. And hopefully the new people are great. And if they're not, then we miss the old people. New stuff happens. It's a forever game. But put it this way. I don't give a shit where the Knicks play as long as they play well. They can play on PBS They could, with no announcer. I can watch it <laughs> like, a lady, like a silent movie. Just let the Knicks play well. That's it, man. And just let Brunson cook. Gary V, definitely appreciate the time. Uh, you know, we're, you. we're heading into the summer and second half. We have the new book. Any any other plans or any anything else going nah, on? With man. You? Everybody can find me if they want anything. I just want everybody to have a great summer and let's have a big off season. Let's all get hyped on Twitter when something big goes down. And I can't wait to see everybody at the... Actually, I'll say this. I'm just blown away and humbled to the end of my life of all the people that dap me up and say what's up at the games and it means the world to me and I hope everyone has a great summer. Yeah, absolutely, man. We were able to connect at the Delta Club. So yep. hopefully we see you again. Thanks again for your time, Gary V. Definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you, my guy. Thank you, bro.